Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at a fairly cheap knife that I really, really like a lot. This is the CRKT Ruger LCK. This is a relatively new offering from CRKT in collaboration with the Ruger, and for the price, this knife is absolutely astounding. I'll go ahead and get into what I like about it, or neutral towards what I dislike, but before all of that, let's go ahead and do a size comparison. First comparison we have here is with the CRKT... Um, Pilar. So you can see it's a little bit shorter and significantly wider. Very different knives. I, I gotta say this is, um, I, I wouldn't say this is restricted to light use, but it's probably a lot better suited for it than the much heavier and much thicker stock of the Pilar. Um, this one is obviously, you know, it's, it's uh, GRN over a steel frame and this is a steel frame lock this here is a liner lock so this one's gonna be a lot heavier a lot more compact it's a bit tankier than this one is uh, personally though I do prefer the Ruger LCK much much better knife in my opinion let's compare it to something just a little bit larger here is the ZT 0450 CF so you can see in terms of uh, closed handle length they're fairly similar the ZT is a little bit longer um, it does have a slightly shorter uh, blade length. I, I put that in air quotes just because the actual cutting edge of the ZT0450 is longer than the Ruger LCK. Mostly because of that finger choil, but the blade length um, on this one is 3.3 inches if you're curious. I'll, you can look up specs at a different point, but um, yeah, so the ZT overall is a tiny bit longer. And last, we will compare it to the Spyderco Spidey Chef. Uh, this knife is a decent bit longer in terms of handle length, probably three quarters of an inch or so. And in terms of blade length, it's fairly similar, honestly. You do get a better blade to handle ratio with the Ruger LCK. Um, I prefer the blade on the Spyderco. It's a lot wider, a lot thinner. But in terms of size, you can, you can get a a bit of an idea there and this knife I'll just compare the thickness to uh, let's say the the ZT 0450 CF it's a pretty pretty popular knife here so it's not a super thick knife however it isn't all that thin either um, it's a little bit thicker than the ZT it rounds off a little bit so it's a little difficult to see that but it's by no means uh, you know super super bulky it's quite a bit thinner than the uh, than the Pilar there Maybe not actually. It looks to be maybe the same thickness, but maybe it's the rounding. It feels a lot slimmer than the than the Pilar does. All right, on to what I like about the knife. Um, first up, the main thing is the action. This this knife is awesome in terms of action. It it flips right open, no problem whatsoever. It's really 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 fun to play with. Um, this it's superb action and it's. It's fairly drop shut too. It's a little difficult to do when I'm this close to the camera, but it will drop shut. Great, great action on this knife. Very, very good for the price, which is $30. That is an astounding price for this this type of action. There are a lot of really, really good things about this knife. You can you can get it in a few different color options as well. And for 30 bucks with a little bit of choice, that's not bad at all. Um, personally, if it were if it were my decision between this and the CRKT Pilar, it'd be this every day. And what what I find odd too is the the Pilar is much much more popular than this knife. It may be the design, but I prefer carrying this one a lot. The deep carry clip certainly helps with that. I love the clip on this. It sticks out just past the edge of the knife, so you won't see this knife in your pocket at all. And it's a pretty small clip as well. It it it's not branded or anything like that. It's honestly probably one of my favorite deep carry clips I've I've ever messed with. And out of all of my knives, I carry this one a decent bit. Um, most of the knives I carry generally sit, you know, in the one to three hundred dollar range in terms of the ones I actually carry with me every day. But this one is absolutely astounding. I, it's certainly in that rotation. I love it to death. The blade shape on it. Is very interesting too you can get this I believe in a drop point or this really really cool reverse Tonto so this is similar if you've ever seen the Benchmade 940 
Um, if you're into knives, you very much know what the 940 looks like, and this is similar. Um, however, it does have a very large finger choil here that is great for choking up on. It gives you a good amount of length there to, uh, to cut with, and you can certainly, you know, grip back here as well. Um, I generally swap it up, actually. The finger choil is very comfortable. It does fit my finger. I don't feel like I'm going to cut myself, really. And the sharpening does come all the way down. So it's very, very easy to sharpen this knife. Tons of clearance there. The uh, liner lock is very, very easy to close as well. It's It sounds like a little thing, but when you're opening and closing a knife constantly, a liner lock, if it or a frame lock for that matter, if it's not done well, it sucks. I hate the one on the Pilar. This one's really, really good. I like it a lot. Flipper tab is nice as well. It does stick out just a little bit, but it kind of rounds off, and there's a little bit of jimping there to help you get a, just a little bit extra purchase on that. And the jimping's fairly fine. It's not going to hurt your finger or anything like that, but it, it gives you just enough traction to flick the blade out with no issue at all. The texture on the scales is really nice. It does give you a little bit of grip and a little bit of interest, um, interesting look to the knife as well. Um, but it's not overly grippy or anything like that. It's pretty deep set in there. If I can get the camera to focus here. It's a little bit difficult just focusing on the scales. You can kind of see there though, it's fairly deep set. It's not a super thin, kind of shallow texture. But it's not going to tear up your pockets or anything either. This could very certainly be a great, great office knife. Or, um, you know, oh, just a work knife if you're looking for something like that as well. It, it certainly fits all that. The branding on it is really nice. You do have the Ruger um, symbol, icon, logo. Logo. You have the Ruger logo there with CRKT right beside it. In the back, you have LCK, Lurch Design. And then you have the uh, what I believe is the knife uh, product number. Uh, no mention of the steel, which I'll get to in just a moment. But overall, it's a pretty good knife. So let's go ahead and go on to what I'm a bit more neutral towards. On to the neutral. So, there's uh, only a couple things here, really. Um, the biggest one is going to be the steel. Um, the steel is 8CR13 MOV, and I know you guys are probably sick and tired of hearing me say that it's not that good of a steel. It could certainly be worse. I'll agree with you there. They're not rocking, you know, 420 on here, but it's not great. Um, there are a lot of companies at this price range doing D2, which rusts a bit more readily. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly give you that. But with this um, <clears throat> this black DLC-esque coating on it, this part wouldn't rust anyway. The only thing that would be in danger of rusting would be the uh, sharpened edge. And that's not that hard to you know, keep rust-free. D2 would be really, really nice on this. And honestly, it would probably be what I would pick. Um, 8CR13 MOV, again, isn't bad. I'm just not sure what market they're targeting here. Um, if they're targeting, you know, office workers, sure. 8CR13 MOV will be just fine, honestly. It really, really will. But with the Ruger co-branding, um, I feel like they're targeting maybe outdoorsmen. In which case, the 8CR13 MOV, eh, it'll sharpen a bit more easily than D2. It won't rust as readily. But it won't hold an edge as long. It's not as tough. There's there's just trade-offs there. Um, I, personally, I wish they would have gone with D2, but that is completely preference, which is why I put it in the neutral section. At this point, it doesn't really matter. We all know that most people who buy this knife aren't really going to be using it all that much, you know, apart from opening boxes or things like that. On to the dislike section, the dreaded dislike. So what do we have here? The only thing that I really dislike about this knife is the fit and finish. Um, in standard CRKT fashion, it's kind of piss poor. Um, the screws right here are misaligned. Let me see if I can show you that there. So the middle ones stick out. They I've tried screwing them back in. They will not go for some reason. I don't know why. There are a ton of screws, by the way. There's five just right here in this little section. Overall, you have nine screws on this knife, which is a little excessive, but you know, teach their own. Fit and finish as well on the centering is not great. It's not um, horrible. I'll give it that. It doesn't quite scrape the side, but it's not super good either. And the biggest thing in terms of fit and finish for me is this knife is running on bearings. That's fantastic. But 
if you tighten it down just a little too bit, you will lose that really good action. If you loosen it up too much, the knife will fly open, um, and the detent will be too soft. It's just there's a very fine line to where you can tighten this knife so once I got to where I'd like it I lock tighted it um, with semi permanent thread locker just to keep it right there and it's great now but the fit and finish on here they they really need to work on the tolerances again it's 30 bucks and I get that it's not that big of a deal to be honest you know you get over some some pushed out screws and uh, having to lock your knife down and you're good to go. On to the conclusion. So overall, what do I think of the CRKT Ruger LCK? I think that name is an absolute mouthful. Technically, though, if you want the official name, it's the CRKT Ruger Knives LCK Tonto Liner Lock Knife Black GRN. And uh, that's, a, that's a bit more of a mouthful. Overall, I think the knife is excellent. For the price, this is probably my favorite knife under $30. I haven't found anything else that I like nearly as much as this, and it's it's great. The LCK in this in this knife in the name actually stands for lightweight compact knife, and it is. It's fairly light. It's not super super light. It's still steel, steel liners, but it's pretty light. And it's very, very compact. Um, it could stand to be a little bit thinner, but overall, this knife is excellent. It's super, super good for discreet or light carry. Um, it's not going to freak out anybody in an office setting, but it's also, you know, very functional for use as a tool, which is the biggest reason you're probably carrying a knife. And for CRKD to put out something with this good of an action, that isn't assisted at this price range is absolutely fantastic. I really, really hope they keep this up. They put out a ton of knives every year, and um, if this is any indication of where they may be going, I'm very, very excited for the future of CRKT knives. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, if you like what you saw here, feel free to subscribe. I do have more knife reviews coming. I have more pen reviews. I have, I have more everything coming. It's just it's a lot of work to get these out, to sit down and do all these. Um, I'm currently about to film one, two, three, four, five more reviews after this. So keep an eye out for those as we upload in the coming weeks. I'm not just going to shove them down your throat. Um, so those will be upcoming over the next month or two. So keep an eye out for those. If you have any questions about the Ruger LCK or anything else that I can maybe assist you with, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to chat with you guys and hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye.